Do you know what the adjective E means? E means good. Hi, hi, hi. Do you know how to conjugate that into past tense form, ta form? Uh, e becomes e ta. That's a good guess, but that would be yeah. if this was a verb. So adjectives in Japanese, specifically adjectives that end with e, do a very specific kind of conjugation in the ta form. Do you, do you drop the e, but you're actually going to add katta. So ikatta would have been a good guess. E is irregular though. So rather than E, it actually turns into yo. <laughs> uh, yokatta is what it turns into. Have you heard yokatta before? Have yokatta. Yeah. <gasps> it's great. Phew, yokatta. It's very common. Yokata. You'll hear that in Japanese. That is from E. So E is a little irregular in that it's always going to turn into yo when it gets conjugated for some reason. But if this was a different E adjective, all you do is drop the E and add katta. Um, this right here is a kanji for path. You've seen this before. This is michi. What is path in Japanese? Michi. Hi. Path can is read, michi. Just can me. you read this word for me? Uh, fumu. Hi. Fumu. Fumu is to step on something. Fumu. And our next word, can you read it for me? Uh, hadashi. Yeah, hadashi. Hadashi means barefoot. Hadashi. Um, do you remember how to hadashi. read this kanji? That is path, which was michi. Yep, michi. Perfect. And how about this kanji? That is fumu, so it's to step. Perfect. How do you think we'd say to step on a path barefoot in Japanese? Mm. Hadashi de. Uh, uh, that is michi. So, hadashi is barefoot. Hai. Barefoot de michi. What particles is do you think should it... go here? Don't think it's wa. Correct, it is not wa. would be without intent. So it can't be ga, I don't think. Hi, hi. So it's o or to. Yep, it is o. o. It is o. o. doesn't make sense. Perfect. It is o. O tends to be used, especially if none of the other verbs make sense. A lot of times O will be used. Because to means like with and and. So it's kind of weird to say to step with mm. a path. So step on a path, we do use O for that. Correct. O. Do you know why de is here for hadashi de? Hadashi de. Um, is it to connect the two? Kind of. Um, so de is a particle used that goes against tools. So the step on something, he used his bare feet to step on something versus using clothes feet or his shoed feet or something like that or clawed feet or something. So mm. it's just is saying this is the tool used to compete to finish this verb. So using his feet, he stepped on the road. It means to um, slide. <clears throat> kind of subedu is on your tongue, kind of slides on your tongue. This is not a do verb. Mm. It is R plus U. Suberu. What is the ta Suberu. form of suberu? It would be subeta. Hi, subeta. A nice little guala stop in there. Um, so this Suberu. is something we might have touched on before. But uh, verbs in Japanese, a lot of times you won't just see one verb on its own. But a lot of times you'll see these little compound verbs. <laughs> that are made by meshing two verbs together. In general, about, I'd say, 80% of the time, these are pretty, like, literal, versus in English, there tends to be more range. So, for example, if we say doghouse, uh, birdhouse, and treehouse, these all are very different ideas of combining these two ideas together, with one being a house that looks, something that looks like a house that you feed birds in, an actual house that belongs to a dog, and a, and a 
thing in a tree that looks like a house that's made out of tree like a house in a tree so they're all related mm. but they're pretty different in general <laughs> japanese tends to be similar with only like 20 percent being a little bit more like metaphorical um so some uh choices of these kind of obvious meanings ageru is used in japanese to mean like you let out a noise to raise your voice kind of idea and yomu is to read so yomi ageru is to read out loud you're raising your voice while reading mm. or hajimeru is to begin so yomi hajimeru is to begin reading or kata which is a noun that means the way of and hashiru is to run hashirikata is the way of running so all you do is get that stem form which is basically adding e to the end of the verb so yomu turns it to yomi or hashiru turns it to hashiri and attaching that to the verb so every once in a while you will not be able to find a verb that's made this way but most of the verbs are in our english dictionaries um but that is how these are made these compound verbs um anyway mm -hmm. so i told you that stem form is made by adding e this is true for u verbs so, do you know what nisumu means? <laughs> nisumu? nisumu. Hai. Nisunde. Hai. I think I heard that before. Yeah. Nisunde. Nisunde. Nisunda. Do you know what it means? Mado saki wo nisunda dorobo. Is it? No, it's not torture, is it? Nisumu is to steal. This is a verb. Uh -huh. To steal is what it means. Nusumu. Hi. So nusumu is nusu and then m plus u. And we take that u and we replace it with e to make what do you think do we make? Nusumu. Nusumi. Hi, nusumi. Perfect. So that's how you make this thing called stem form. How do we do that with suberu, which meant to slide? To slide, suberu becomes suberu. Suberi? No. Yep, suberi. <laughs> You're correct. It is suberi. Yep. Suberi. Yep, correct. Yasi is a word that means Yasai. easy. Yasi, easy. Um, do you have to know this kanji? That is ame, which I is rain. Ame, rain. Perfect. So in Japanese, we can get we can use that stem form thing I talked about right over here to describe something as easy to do. So we can get yasui and add a stem form verb to mean easy to steal, like nusumi yasui. Can you read this one for me? <coughs> uh, that is dorobo, no dorobo. Mm, dorobo is a noun we're looking at a verb right here my hint is that this verb used to end with mu mm. hi yes nusumu. so nusumu is over here next plate please this word right here has mm. foot in it foot is in hadachi Good guess. Hadashi was barefoot, but that is also a noun. We're looking for a verb. Eto. Verbs are actions, like to run, to steal, to kill, to murder. Mm, fumu? Yep, this was fumu, to step on. So fumu turned into fumiyasui, which is easy to step on. Fumiyasui, which sounds kind of silly, but perhaps they're talking about something being hard, like Legos are hard to step on, right? So I'll be uh, mm. a not Fumiyasui. Fumiyasui janai. Fumiyasukunai. Uh, so yeah, yasui is easy and fumu turn into fumi. How would you say easy to slip? Using the word suberu, which is to slip. Hi. <laughs> so, suberu become suberi yasui. Right. Perfect. Suberi yasui. So, now we have easy to slip. How would you say an easy to slip path or a path that's easy to slip on? 
It is easy to slip. Sube, yasui. In the end, could we just put miti? Yes. Or we need to connect it somehow. No, nope, that's perfect because uh, yasui is an adjective. This is what I wanted you to make, which is perfect. You could have also turned this into a full on sentence, <clears throat> which would be like, Muchi, Michi wa suberi yasui, which is literally, the path is easy to slip on. So both of these are mm. what I wanted you to make. Um, the goal was that was the top one, which is what you made, which was using this as an adjective, right, to describe miti. But there's nothing wrong with the bottom path, as thus does make it into an actual sentence. So this mm. right here is a kanji used to describe what ame does. Ame falls. This is pronounced as fu, furu. What is you? fall? Yep. Oh, furu. How do you think we say rain falls in Japanese? I think no would make more sense. Ame no furu. So ame no furu does show up in certain cases. That's going to show up if this was a relative clause. So, ame no furu uh, yoru or something. That'd be the night of rain falling. That would be grammatically correct. But since this is not a relative clause, this is something that's going to end with like a period right here, which is just rain falls. So, instead, we're going to want not no. So, we don't want no because it's not a relative clause. Um, but this no, when we have it in a relative clause, is replacing a certain particle. And it can only replace one kind of particle. What do you think it is? Rain falls. Do you think it's the intent with O, non intent Rain. with ga, wa, to? What do you think? Rain falls. It's probably ga without Correct. intent. It is ga without intent. Amiga furu. Perfect. So what do you so this verb right here it ends with r plus u. How would you put this into ta form? Furu becomes futa. Yep, futa. Perfect. Um, do you know what yasui meant? Yasui. Yasui is cheap or easy. Hi. It can have both those meanings correct. Theoretically, easy and cheap do actually have different kanji, but there's no kanji here, so both of those meanings could be correct. Now, do you remember how to make things into ta form? This was the first thing we talked about today. So we turn an, something that ends into e, e into the past tense. Katta. Yep, katta. So yes, katta would be it was <laughs> what it was easy. Yes, katta. So just so you know, rather than saying yasu katta, yes, katta. su tends to be slurred. Yeah, yasu katta. So earlier, we talked about relative clauses. So right now, we have it as a sentence. Amega futta, rain fell. Could we rearrange this to turn this into a relative clause saying rain that fell? So we're just moving the verb around. How do you think we're going to do that? Rain hmm. that fell. Rain that fell. Amega futta. Eto. Rain that fell. So if it was rain was falling, Amega furu. Isn't it the same? Rain is falling amega is Amega futteru. So I didn't change the tense over here. I said the rain that fell. <laughs> Not the rain, not rain fell. So I added a that to the sentence in mm. English. That is a sign of a relative clause. Relative clause is a big linguistic term or grammatical term. That means we have a baby sentence that is turning into an adjective. So this right here allows us to make really mm. long sentences. For example, if I want to say rain is cold, I'd say ame wa. Tsumetai. Tsumetai. I mean, what's Rain is cold. But what if I want to say the rain that the rain is falling 
and it is cold. And I want to combine these into one sentence. Well, the obvious way to do it would be tsumetai ame ga furu or futa, right? That's be just taking the adjective and using it as an adjective to describe the noun. That is the normal mm. way of doing it. But in Japanese, they do like relative clauses a lot. And this would instead be giving this ame wa tsumetai. It's going to still end with this. And instead, we're going to add a relative clause in front. All you have to do is grab that verb, furu, and put it here. Futta. Futta ame wa tsumetai. What does that mean? Futta ame wa tsumetai. Futta ame wa tsumetai. So the rain that fell right. is cold. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So this right here, in English, our relative clauses are marked by the word that. <laughs> in Japanese, it is marked by a verb ending in this kind of short form, which is going to be ta, negative form, which is going to be e, or dictionary form, which is do. So if you see any of these endings, and it's not going to have a period after it, hmm. that it means it's a relative clause. So it's very obvious when reading books whether or not something's a relative clause. It gets a little bit confusing when you're reading manga because uh, we can be like, oh, did the sentence end? Is it continuing in the next parent bubble? That's uh, when things get a little hmm. bit confusing. But in novels, we will have periods when the sentence ends. So it does make it very easy to tell when we have a relative clause versus when we don't have a relative clause. So all this means is that this information is an adjective describing a noun and it just goes down like that you know what say means a lot of times you'll see no say de boku no say de or kare no say de say no no that's something else uh say no means fault so like you may mm, not really you may you may like dream Say hmm. is used when you want to lay the fault on somebody. Like, it's your fault would be anata no say. Um, so, de is that de we saw earlier with hadashi? Do you know what that de was doing with hadashi de michi o fumu? Hadashi meant barefoot. Hadashi de. Hmm. Hadashi de. So. What was the full sentence? Hadashi, Hadashi de michi o fumu. Michi o. Right. So I step on the Go path. On. Hadashi de. Stepping on the path. Fumu. Uh, to step. Oh, okay. So step on the path barefoot. Yes. So this right here, this de, is attached to barefoot. What does that tell us if barefoot is doing in a sentence? So in English, you say the step on the path barefoot, and that makes sense. We know exactly what's going on. But this could be like, well, if we didn't have de, that could change the meaning of the sentence, because de marks particles. Like mm. if it said, hadashi wa michi o fumu, would be weird. It'd be like, as for the bare feet, they stepped on the path. It'd be like very aggressive. Um, but de, de marks tools. It's a tool used to accomplish the verb. So this is the same thing going on here with mm. this de. This is the tool to accomplish the verb. So this means because of you, like if you said you here, like anata, anata no sei de. Mm. It's you were the tool used to cause whatever verb that's going to go in the sentence. This is the tool. And say is basically like a noun. So fault. Is the closest word we can say. It's blank's fault. No say de. So, um, right. So this is the fault that basically caused the thing to occur. So now we have some time words. Do you have any idea what you got that means? You you got that. Um, you got that. Is it evening? It is. You got that. Is evening perfect? How about the word on the bottom? This is a totally new one. Yoake. 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 I don't think I've ever heard that before. 
the probably not. Uh, probably pops up in anime sometimes. Yoake is dawn. So theoretically, you got that as dusk, hmm. but it means like evening, right? Just like this right here means like early morning. Hmm. So you got that and Yoake are Yo basically the opposites of the time. This one right here is like, I don't know, depends on the time zone, like 8 p.m. And Yoake is like 6 a.m. Something like that. Dusk versus dawn. Um. Okay. So right here, I have a sentence that says, Ore no sei de jishin made kashimao, which means, by the fault of me, using me as a tool for the fault of, I completely dis I completely disappear myself. So this de is saying it's the cause, basically, the tool used to accomplish this verb. How would you say because of the rain? How would you say that using no say de and ame? Because of the rain. Hi. Um, because of the rain. Mm -mm. Ame no or ame dakara or something like that. You could say ame dakara. That'd be because of the rain. That's correct. That would be um literally because of the rain. What if I wanted to say it's the fault of the rain? Uh, ame no se de. Hi, ame no se de. Perfect. <laughs> what if I wanted to describe this ame as ame that fell? Mm -mm -mm. I put no se that de. information at B or C if I want to add that fell to the sentence. I was going to say B, but I think putting a C makes sense too. C Furu does make no more de. sense. What are we going to put there at C? Um, furu. furu. So Furu is um future habitual tense. So because of rain that falls, like falls in general. What if I want to say rain that fell? Mm. Furu becomes futa. Hi. Futa. futa ame no se de. The fault of the rain that fell. So this right here, mm. that first part of that English sentence you have there. So that way you make the next part, which is the path is easy to slip on. <laughs> the path is easy to slip on. The path is easy to slip on. Michi. Path easy to slip on. <laughs> Slip is severu, so we can say severu ga. No, that's not good. Severu ta. Severi. Hi. Hmm. Severi. Now, easy. Kanta? No. Um. You have a little bit of a vocab list. Easy. Let's see. We got furu, ame, no seide, michi, severu, and yasui. <laughs> Mm, yasui. Yasui. Hi. And what particle do you think is missing from here? It goes after michi. Uh, the path is easy to slip on. Because there's no intent, I'll say ga. You can use ga here. So that would be correct. Uh, it can't be o. You can use ga or wa here. Oh. Michi wa subere yasui. Michi ga subere yasui. Both <laughs> of those are correct. So these are both. The path is easy to slip on due to or the fault of the rain that fell. Perfect. Um, so this right here is the word that we learned that meant dusk or evening. It ended with gata. Do you know what it started with? You got that. Hi, you got that. Perfect. Um, you know what yoake meant? Yoake is the opposite. Hi, so evening exactly. it's probably dawn. Yes, it is dawn. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Mm, what does this mean? Yotta. Futta. 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 Hi. Mm -mm. So dawn ame fell. So rain fell at dawn. Yep, rain fell at dawn. 
So neat works to mark time in this context. Perfect. So this is really useful if we wanted to add time into a relative clause. So I'm going to have you guess how we're going to do that. So the rain that fell in the evening. How do you think we're going to say that using yugata, ame, and furu? So we're going to be making a relative clause. So it should end in ame. Mm. The rain that fell in the evening. Okay. Du, 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 du. Sorry. So you got that becomes no that change that doesn't change. It's furu that changes. Furu becomes futa. Futa. Futa ame. So rain fell. Rain fell. Rain That's correct. That fell. How are we gonna add in the evening to this though? Uh futa. Futa. Uh, evening was evening was yukata, right, and it's yukata. already in te form, so yukata. Where is it going? This yukata at B or C? Uh, it would be C. That's a good guess. So this yukata right here, I don't get that particle ni, means that evening fell. Evening fell. Was that was that our goal? Oh. Hmm. So we're not saying evening fell. So no, it can't not. go there. Evening mm -hmm. fell. So where do you think it's supposed to go then? So it goes at V. So, so. It goes over here. So this is how these relative clauses can help convey a lot of information and why you might use a relative <laughs> clause versus not using one. So rather than saying ame, we want to be specific and add time, you can't really just say you got the ni ame wa tsumetai. That just means the rain is cold, specifically the evening rain is cold. But perhaps they just we wanted to add when it was raining. And then what 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 specific rain was cold? Rather than saying right now, that's what I would feel like. The rain is cold in the evening, versus saying the rain that fell in the evening was cold. It was cold. Kind mm -hmm. of um a silly distinction right here, but it makes more sense in the target sentence we're making. But basically this yukata is attached to the verb. So verbs in Japanese kind of get first dibs. So this guy right here gets first dibs for this guy to describe it. And also kind of gets first dibs to describe the noun it's attached to. So he basically gets both mm. these. And he's like, these are mine. He he he. Rather than, um, so when you had it earlier with yukata over here, it meant he was describing yukata as an adjective rather than describing right. um, it. So whenever you see a verb, normally that's kind of the end of something. Being like this right here, whole thing is describing that type of idea. So never put things after a verb unless it's the thing the verb is describing and you're making a relative clause. Um, can you read this word for me? Ishi datame. Hi, ishi datame is a paved um road. Like a stone road, road made out of rocks. This ishi is rock. Mm. Uh, what was this paved stone word? Ended with ta dami. Ishi ta dami. Hi, ishi ta dami. Perfect. <clears throat> How would you say to step on the stone paved path barefoot? <laughs> Step on the stone paved path barefoot. So, mm -mm. <clears throat> to step, Let's start with to step, which was what was to step? To step is fumu. 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 To step on stone paved. So, ichi tadami. Furu, or sorry, fumu, to step on the stone pave. So we said ishi tatami fumu? Mm, and then you need to put michi somewhere. Hmm. Michi. Well, for one thing, you're missing a particle. There's no particle here. You just said stone pavement. 
step on. Kind of caveman speech going on here. Mm. We we need our particle. What particle do you think we need here? Hi. The stone paved was. Ishitadami. Ishitadami. Hi. Ishitadami got to me. So. Sadly, that's not really right, because Fumu, to step on, conveys intent. You try, you attempted to step on. You were like, oh, I'm moving my feet right now. I'm doing the stepping. Mm. So instead, Standing the particle wa. should be o. Oh. Um, it could be wa if you want to be dramatic. So I stepped mm. on the stone paved floor. It wasn't made out of wood or something like you want to be really aggressive. That's more likely to show up in like a fantasy story if you want to be like, or in a, a comedy, you say like poop, something. <laughs> I stepped in poop. Maybe that's what you'd use mm. wa to be kind of um, dramatic. But there's no real reason to be dramatic about stepping on um, the stone paved floor. So most likely you're probably not going to see wa in that way. But you could. There, there are times when you would see that. But all would make more sense. So this is literally just saying to step on oh. stone paved. To step on stone paved. Step on stone paved. If you look at the English at the sentence, end, we could put Mitty. Yes. <clears throat> when you said at the end, so, do you mean at the end of the sentence or at the end of the word stone paved? end of the sentence so you so with this it says the path that mm. was stepped on wait the path stepped on so it, it's a hard because like at this page is depending on meaning but this right here says step on stone paved was the path would be my interpretation of this meaning that the path is stepping on the stone paved rock not necessarily yeah. if this wasn't here for example you would assume this means the path that was stepped on. Because it's a relative clause here. Do we see a relative clause in the English version of the sentence? To step on the stone paved path. Mm, stone paved path. Yeah, there's there's no relative clause in the English version. So I don't really need to add a relative clause in here. So stone paved, is that a noun, an adjective? What is stone paved? Stone paved. Be an adjective. It is acting as an adjective here, but it is a noun. So when nouns act as adjectives, they actually do a really interesting thing, which is to give it a particle. So we have miti, which is our noun, the path, right? I step on a path. Hi. And then we're describing that path as stone paved. There's a particle that occurs here in Japanese. In English, we do use dot s as this particle. When it's someone else, like Samu, mm. Samu's um, pen or something like that. That's what we would do in English. We'd add this a prophecy S to show this possession, but that only works in the third person with humans. Japanese has worked with all nouns. Do you know what this should be? What should be the glue here? Uh, How do we no. glue? Yes. No. Yes. So this right here literally says to step on. This is the on o the path that is stone paved. So the stone paved the step on the stone paved path. So now we want to add barefoot. There's no relative clause here. So that means you want to end in a verb. So we ending in the verb. Mm. So x and v. So where do we want to put barefoot? At v or x? Barefoot. Right. Um. V to X, Mitzi, or barefoot. Um, or B. Is it X? It can go on X, correct? So you're describing the X. All right, so I'm going to write Hadashi there. Now we're missing a particle. Hadashi de. Hi, Hadashi de. Perfect. Now, that, now this sentence right here is the exact same yeah. sentence in English as, um, sorry, I'm going to copy and paste this, as if I took this hadashi and I stuck it over here. 
These are both <laughs> uh the same in Japanese. Do you want to know why they're the same? Uh, because of the particles? Because of the particles, yes. So English, we use our sentence structure to um, convey our meaning. In Japanese, we use particles. So because of that, you can move these particles around, and the meaning doesn't actually really change as long as you're ending in a verb. Because verbs are how we know things end in Japanese because of this large amount of movement that goes on. So the one rule is verbs go at the end, and then particles can go wherever. And then there's certain boundary rules that have to do with these verb ending things that will make more sense as you learn Japanese where these um, restrictions are. Um, hmm. Do you know what naru means? Uh, to become. To become, yes. So naru is almost always going to be modified by some kind of adverb, either an adjective ending in ku, like kawaiku naru means to become cute, or a noun ending in ni, like neko ni naru, to become a cat. Um. Anyway, right over here, we have naru to become and yasuku. Hmm. What do you think yasuku naru means? Suberi yasuku naru. To become cheap? Yeah, it could be to become cheap. Cheap. It could definitely mean that. In this context, it's to become easy, but it could mean to become cheap. That mm -hmm. is correct. So let's go read this sentence from the book. Um, you got no, that's a different one. This means path. Path Mitsi. Hi. Mitsi Gasuberi Suberi Yasukunai or Naru. Hi, Yasukunaru. So right here, our new grammar here is this to. To occurs when something occurs right afterwards with some kind of like a hundred percent certainty, basically. It's it's some kind of law. So to is used very often in the past because everything in the past had occurred. There's there's no not occurring in the past because it's something that happened in the past. It it already it already happened. So the event is like you know always going to happen. That's the outcome of that event because it happened in the past. It's not going to change. Mm -hmm. so, so to is very common use that way. <clears throat> you can also use it though in like future tense and stuff when you're doing something that makes logical sense. For example, this is an example of like a logical sentence, right? Ame ga furu, which is when the rain falls, what do you think is going to happen to the paths of the roads? Michi ga suburi yasuku naru. So, the path suburi. So, the path slips. Well, the path isn't doing slipping. Do you know what suberu means? Suberu means to slip. Suberu is to slip, correct. Or it means to slide. It's that kind of verb. And then we have yasui here, though. Yasui. Yasui. Yeah, so, so it's easy to slip. Mm, yeah, so the path is becomes easy to slip. Would be a literal way to translate that. So it just means it's easy to slip on this path in this um context. Easy to slip on the path. Mm. So when the rain falls, the path gets easy to slip on. That's the logical um idea coming here. You can also use this toe if you're talking about math, like five plus five equals six <laughs> equals ten. Uh you could use toe there because it's a always when you get five and you add five to it, you're always gonna make ten. So that's how to mm. is used. Anyway, how would you say I step onto the path? I step onto the path. Right. So, Michi or Michi. Michi. Michi, Michi Suberu. Mm 